to get started, uh, we use some libraries that we will need for um, you know doing the stuff that we want to do. So we're going to import them, which is the command in Python for, for loading a library. First, we need uh, requests, which is a library that um, makes requests to, for example, APIs and loads the data. Then we import bokeh. So bokeh is a library that will allow us to draw charts and graphs and stuff like that, diagrams, um, which is going to be helpful, obviously. Um, and uh, this is just, you know, this this makes some general plotting commands available. It, it means import all commands from uh, bokeh from the bokeh plotting library, um, and then we need. Uh, we are going to need a bar graph later. So from the bar graph, let's import that. Um, if you want to know what's in stuff like Bokeh, so you know what to import, uh, you can just Google it. Oh, yeah, Bokeh is a term from photography. So um, that's where that comes from. There's a documentation, so it's stuff you can do with Bokeh, which is going to be useful later. So I'll keep this tab open. Um, so we're going to import that. So um, I'm going to evaluate that, and um, then it'll load these libraries into my notebook. There, The commands will be available to me. So we're going to do that by pressing uh, Shift-Enter, which is, means evaluate and open a new cell below. As you can see, uh, Bokeh is loaded. And um, then we want to you know, actually query the API. So we need an API key. So let's do that. Put it uh, in a variable, so I'll, I'll have it for later. Uh, I'll just use it from the app challenge. So this is my API key. And, um, well, I'll evaluate that. So maybe let's get a data set list. So we'll do requests, get, oh yeah, maybe I should just define the AP URL. This So that's 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 the bit that's uh, always the same. Whoops. For all uh, requests that we make, so I'm going just going to put that uh, into a, into another variable. So uh, evaluate, and then I'm going to see what what we have for data sets. So um, API URL plus. You know, sticking stuff together, and then I'll the user key and the data set type. So it'll do that for us. And it'll automatically build the, the correct URL and um, get whatever's inside. So we'll have uh, it's in there. OK. Let's see what that is. Oh, yeah, I should. I'm putting results so it, it, it prints what's inside the result this time. HTTP response, that's uh, good to know. But it's not very helpful. We want the contents as JSON. So we can do this. And then, OK. We see we have data sets available. Um, and this is basically how you get stuff out of, out of the API in Python. So um, since we will have to do stuff like this a lot, meaning uh, putting the API key uh, and the URL together, we might write a function to make this easier for us in the future. So I'll, I'll do that. 
Um, this can go away. So, and it's uh, the URL. And, or well, let's call it the path because we'll build the URL ourselves. So, um, the path and the parameters. Instead, uh, when the user doesn't give parameters, it'll just assume there's an empty box of parameters. So, uh, in Py Python, knows that when you start a function uh, in JavaScript, you use you know function uh, over. In Python, the function is over when indentation changes. So this is in the function. This is out of the function. This is back in the function. Uh, actually, no, you can't go back in the function. But um, as soon as uh, you start code uh, out of the function, the function is over. So uh, this is in. This is also in. This is still in out of the function. The function definition ends here. So this is uh, in, in, in Python. Uh, the indentation, your, your tabs, your spaces are actually uh, significant, which um, I guess may be uh, funny to get used to in the beginning, but uh, it makes your code very readable. So you'll always know where you are in the program if this is inside a function or if it's, if it's not inside a function because it will be immediately uh, visible. Uh, so you don't even need you know, uh, curly braces to start and end functions. Let's write a function that um, performs most of the work that we do in the API request so we don't have to repeat ourselves all the time. So, um, the URL is uh, our API URL. And we have um, the parameters that we have to give. Uh, we have to extend those by the API key. So we say, okay, let's take the parameters that the user gave us. Expand those by uh, user key API. And then we'll do um, a request well, that we have. And we'll get the JSON from that. And actually, we'll just a new function um, that I'm going to evaluate. Uh, so it creates the function. And now that we have that, we can just go, OK, do an API request. We want uh, the data sets. We want data set type. Whoops. Oh, it's called requests. OK. Uh, I need to update this, so I press uh, Control Enter. All right, and then this will work as well. Sorry. So, what did I do wrong? Oh, yeah, that's P. It should be P. And there we go. So now we have a function that lets us perform API requests very quickly. Um, without having to put in the API key and stuff every time. So um, with that in mind, um, let's just download all the variables. I think that, yeah, that, that, that'll explain something about Python, I think. Um, so we have API variables. Make an API request. For, you know, if we go here, user key data set code is EQLS. 
This will take a while. So this is a lot of stuff. And we will need to process that in the in the uh, in the notebook. As you can see, the URL is data sets, EQLS variables, and you know the user key. So we'll do date. That should be. Um, that's probably it. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's go. Okay, now it's stored uh, the result of that in API variables. So let's have a look at that. Oh, sorry, that. No. Okay. Um, so actually, yes, there's no error, but the actual variables that we want um, are in a field called variables. So Maybe when we retrieve them, let's just get them out immediately. Just cut that out. Just take that field directly. So it's loaded them, and there we go. Um, these are all the variables that we have, so we can, you know, check some stuff. It's 192. I thought 196. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so um, one thing about Python is it's, it's very good um, at filtering and you know, exploring stuff. So let's, let's just take one of the variables, maybe at random number, tw uh, the one at, that's the 23rd in the list. Oh, sorry, it's API variables. Oh yeah. Um, this actually has uh, auto completion. So if you type you know, API and then press tab, it'll give you a, a list of stuff that's already defined. So we can use that. Okay, here's the variable. Mm -hmm. So um, we could, for example, get a list of all the topics just from the variables because every variable has a topic um, in the data. Here, yeah. so we could go, all right, um, for um, uh, get the topic, and from that topic, we want the topic value. And um, so this was this would get us, you know, a big list of that. Oh yeah, some topics aren't defined, so we have to go uh, only do that if uh, the topic is not none. So that gives us, you know, stuff of of the topics. Um, there are a lot of duplicates in there, so we'll just turn that list into a set, which is basically a list which only uh, allows one item of each. And there we go. That's the set of the topics. So in one line of code, we have extracted all the topics from 192 variables. So this this is showing us what the topics are. So earlier when we were trying to describe what's in the data set, we can see it there now. There's risk, exactly. general health, health services, medical, um, and I also noticed those two years that are in this data set, 2007 and 2011. That was something that uh, you showed a little bit earlier on. So that's that's when the surveys are from. Let's turn this, this set, into our topic, uh, into our topic dictionary. So we... Um, topic values. That's not right. This dictionary that maps topic values 
to topic IDs. And then we do that. Hopefully it's right. Let's have a look. Yeah, okay. So now we can uh, see the topic ID for every topic. At the start, we downloaded the whole, you know, the whole bunch of variables. So if we want to have all variables that are inside uh, the housing topic, we just go, okay, give us all the variables. Uh, And we want the label, maybe. Actually, maybe again. So um, we have this huge list of, of stuff and we can actually sort of query it by just writing Python um, in, you know, I, I won't say it's plain English, but you know, if you've had, if you had mathematics in school, um, maybe it's sort of familiar, this, this sort of formulation. Uh, so um, this is uh, how we can query stuff. So now let's, uh, let's, let's graph stuff. Um, let's pick a variable maybe, um, Problems. So tenure looks maybe interesting. Actually, actually, uh, we can just see. Um, I'll open a new cell. And actually, if you were writing a real report, you're probably putting some stuff here. So to get stuff out of the API, we use uh, the study data frequency call. Let's just do that, then set code QLS. Variable is, uh, let's look at tenure maybe, it's 40. Okay, does this have, um, so okay, let's, let's maybe, maybe we should look, look, uh, look at the tenure variable in, in detail first. So um, we take this and we say, okay, tenure is this sort of filter that we had before and we just use that as a search. So it means give me the next stuff out of this filter that matches it. And we write, so let's, let's do this, okay. And we that should give us, it's not, Oh yeah, we just we just actually we just want the actual variable, not uh, the name and the ID. So okay, and then we see um, that this describes how people are living. Mm -hmm. So okay, maybe let's 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 plot that. So we go, we want the data for that, which is, no. Okay, it's built like data sets, EQLS time series frequency. Okay. 
and we have to put a variable ID. It's 40 in our case, yeah. Okay, then I will do it. And that's done. Let's look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can see we have uh, the year 2007 and the year 2011. Um, and we have some values and the frequency, which is really the, the stuff that we're interested in. This is the frequency is how, how many people um, gave this answer in the questionnaire. So um, we'll have to find a way of, of plotting that, you know, beautifully. 